Hey, welcome to Mike's Trains, and thanks for sitting down for another video. Um, in this video, uh, you saw the title. It's it's we're gonna paint the rocks that are in here, but I wanted to show you this. This is the wall, the retaining wall that we made in the last video. Uh, I painted it. I did it off video just because it's what it is, and I just wanted to get it done. Um, but I'll give you a quick thing on how I painted it. I think it came out pretty good. Um, there's the the uh, curve we cut into it to go around the rock formation and it's not actually mounted in there yet but that's how it's gonna go it'll be just like that it'll fit a little bit tighter I have it just kinda tacked in place real lightly so that it'll fit and this is the whole thing kind of in place and you can see down at the end there where the foam goes a little bit further than the wall does and I'll have to make an add-on section for that end of the of the wall but we'll tackle that end when I get to it um, but for the for the most part this is what it's gonna look like and this is the completed wall and all I did to paint this now there are several different colors in this uh, and there's a, two different methods I use to get this um, so and the rocks are kind of following the same kind of thing where the, the whole key to all of this is layers and the colors need to be done in layers right so what I did was I painted this I have uh, I'm using model master acrylics which are these right here Let's see if we can focus this a little bit so yeah so these are what I'm using um, little bottles and I like them a lot in the airbrush they work really well so I'm using them so what I did was I sprayed that the whole wall I primered it in gray and then I went over it and I got these model master acrylics I used aged concrete and I sprayed the whole thing in aged concrete and then after that I sprayed the centers of the wall um, the centers in, in between all these pillars. I sprayed those with regular concrete color. Okay, and then I went along the bottom of the wall and I sprayed that the same way I aged the roundhouse building with the black and darkened things up. I did the whole bottom section of that wall and you can see how it's shaded darker. And that's all sprayed black so we have black down there and then we have the two colors on the top after that I took white and mixed it in the same fading color as I did on the uh, on the roundhouse building with the white very heavily thin white model master paint and then I lightened the whole wall down after that so now it's a little bit lighter than it was and then the black on the bottom is a little bit lighter it's not as pronounced as it was when I sprayed the black so so it lightened it up and then I took a, a, another method of weathering and I used, I have pan pastels that I got and I used those and I took some of the lighter colors, the whites and things like that and I used those as well in between the pillars here, these, all these areas here and I brushed fairly heavily into those areas and blended out from the center I went down from the top and then out from the center and that's pretty much what got us to the point we're at now and I think it looks really good I'm, I'm very happy with it but again it's all in layers layers on top of layers and then there's also uh, in the pan pastels there's the white and then I took a little bit of red to reflect some iron maybe in the concrete uh, ran a little bit of that along the pillar itself to darken that up and that gave me more of a shade effect along the pillars um, I could have gone a step further and maybe put a little bit of green down towards the bottom like a like an olive drab green down there and and to, to show a little bit of mildew or something maybe but I think I'm gonna stop it right where it's at I'm not gonna clear coat it because clear coat will tend to take down the pastel uh, coloring a little bit and I, I don't I like the way it looks at this point I don't want to change it at all and the point of clear clear coating is to keep anybody fingers and hands from changing 
the color and pulling away the pastels and, and things like that. Well, this is in an area where, where it really doesn't get bothered or touched or, or, or changed. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it as is. So let's look at the rock areas that we're going to paint. Now I'm going to pull out this wall to paint these rocks. So you've seen this before. And I'm going to take you over to the other side so you can see um, how that all came out as well. Okay, so here's the other side, and you can kind of see how I, I filled in also with the rock formations coming down the slope here, down the incline, and then the, rock, the rocks come down to here, and then I switched over and I just blended this top level into the lower level with sculpt mold all the way down and around. So everything is tied together in there the way it needs to be, so now we just need to paint everything. And I'm not going to worry also about this area down here. Now I'm going to run, put an overpass in here for a road. So we're going to leave this alone for the time being. We'll come back to that at a later time and put that all in. Um, but right now for this video we want to talk about the painting and that's going to be done in layers as well. So let me get everything um, taped off and covered up because I need to cover this building because it's too close to the rock. Too close to the rocks to not worry about getting paint on and I want to cover up the tracks and things like that so let me get everything covered up and then we'll get right into this process okay so let's start with the paints I'm going to use um, these are all inexpensive inexpensive paints from either Michael's Hobby or uh, Hobby Lobby or any of those types of stores even Walmart carries these doesn't matter um, these are the colors I'm going to use first they're all acrylics. They clean up with water, which is awesome. I really like them. Um, I have white, black, and this is a burnt sienna. Um, those are what I'm going to start with. Now, what I do with these paints for the first round is I put them in bottles like this. So I'll squeeze a bunch in the bottom, and I'll fill the bottle with water and really water them down, mix them up really well. So now they're just a uh, more or less colored water. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do the whole wall here with the sprays, and I'm just going to speed up the time so you can see how it goes. I'm just going to explain real quick right now what goes on, so you, you'll know what I'm doing. I'm going to start with the black, and I'm going to blast it in all the deep areas that are on there. Okay, everywhere that's deep, any cracks, crevices, things like that. I want to fill those with black. I want to darken them up. I'm not going to worry about where the paint goes. Then I have. So this is the black. I have this one here, which is a light gray. So I have black and white mixed together. And I just mess with that color ratios to black to the white until I get the right gray ratio that I'm looking for for the rocks. So after the black, I'm going to hit it with the gray, and I'm going to cover everything in the gray and let it run down and get wherever it's going to get. And then I'll, I'll selectively go through with the burnt sienna, the red, different spots in there and I'll hit the red and let that run down and those will give me the iron streaks through the through the granite and all that kind of stuff and it'll look good it, it's going to be a mess but this is how how I do it and then we'll hit the next step after this dries for a few so let's let's get started on this Okay, so here you go. That's everything, and it looks really dark. I, I get it, but have no fear. We have more steps to go. Like I said, layers. Um, if I go in closer, you can kind of see a little bit of what's going on. So the spray allows me to cover a larger area in a quick amount of time, and you can still see some white showing through, and that's where the sculpt mold is. The sculpt mold unfortunately doesn't soak up the liquid as quickly as the plaster does. Um, so we have to treat those areas differently and we still have another layer to put on top of all of this. So let's take a look down over here and here's the other side. So that's all covered. 
Now we're gonna let this sit for a little bit, but what I am gonna do, I need just to dry just a touch. It doesn't have to be completely dry. I just want it to soak up whatever's on there. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna come back over to this side and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak up because a lot of this paint, because we sprayed and we sprayed it heavy, is I have a lot of water down on the bottom on the, the base and this is what I didn't want to get everywhere that's why we covered everything so I'm just going to take a paper towel and soak up some of this water okay so so now we're all you know kind of dabbed up I got all the worst of the liquid off of there now I'm going to mix up and we're going to get ready for the next phase of this. Okay, so now for the next layer. Um, I've mixed in a cup here. I have some paint and it's the gray. I, I've actually lightened it up a lot. And I'm going to do this a little differently than I did the rest. So you can kind of, I don't know if you can see this color or not. It's quite a bit lighter than what we've been, what we've put on so far. So I'm going to do this with a sponge instead of the spray because I want to control it a little more so I'm gonna let this run I'm gonna put it on there I'm gonna let it run down the walls so I'm gonna continue moving down I can't reach with the camera here but I'm gonna continue moving down and I'll give you a look at what it looks like after I'm done okay so there it is with the light gray and then I added another touch of red with a little bit of a heavier paint. There you go. And I just let that run as you, you can see how that goes. And now we have to let all of that dry. That has to completely dry before we can move on to the next step. Let's look down at the other end. And there's the other end. Now I left this part white down here because that's going to be earth colored and treated as such. So we don't want to change the uh, coloring of that with the rock colorings so there you go you can go closer to the length of it so there you go with the colors and then you can see all the way down the wall that's the colorings for it so we have actually four colors mixed up in there and you can see where the black stayed in the dark. Um, we have shadows, we have highlighted areas and, and with our next step, let me bring this back over to the, to the other side again. All right, so once this is dried, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna dry brush the whole thing. Um, as I'm looking, I'm seeing, no, I guess not. It looks like there's a little touch of white showing, but that's actually the white paint, and I'm going to leave that because it leaves a variation. It gives the look of maybe some quartz that was running through the rock, uh, something like that maybe. I'm going to leave it. Um, yeah, so the next step is dry brushing, and we can't do that until this is dry. You don't even try to dry brush anything if it's even remotely wet. Um, it's just not going to work. So we have to let this dry. That's going to take probably a day or so to dry up. So right now I'm just going to go back through again and I'm going to soak up all the extra water on the bottom so that the rocks aren't continually, you know, um, soaking up and drawing up water from the base. So I want to make sure everything is good and dry. So I'm going to soak up all the rest of the water and then I'll come back when this is all dry and we'll, we'll take a look at dry brushing all of this. Alright, so We've let all this stuff dry, and you saw how I got all this and how we got to this point. So here it is, all dried up, and we'll give you a look. So this is what we have. You can see the darkened areas, the light areas, the little bit of red we stuck in there. And it might look a little heavy, but you know what? We're not going to worry about it. Because now it's time for the next phase of this. And like I said, we're doing this in layers. It's always in layers. One layer on top of another. So that's how we want to do this. 
So now I'm going to take that white paint I'm going to come over here and I have some newspaper and this is the brush I'm going to use. Okay. Um, this brush here, I, I prefer using this brush for uh, dry brushing. It's nice and heavy and, and it does what I want to do fairly well. So you know you can use whatever is good for you but that's that's generally what I like to use so now I have a piece of newspaper here I'm gonna take my white paint and I'm gonna put a blob of it on here like that now that's a lot I, I'm not even gonna use half of that but uh that's how we're gonna start so I'm gonna take my brush I'm gonna put it in the white paint like this and we're gonna wet the end and I'm gonna start wiping it off we want very little on the brush so this is what we're what we're looking at there's hardly anything on there I'm going to go over to our wall a rock face and we're just going to brush over the high points of the wall lightly And it's going to bring out the detail in the rock. And then we can put the, uh, the dry brushing a little bit heavier in some areas. A little bit lighter in others and we can bring out the depth of the rock so that's what we're looking at that's the whole process and that's all it is and, and it looks pretty darn good I, I'm really happy with that kind of thing and you can see the the, the, the dark areas are recessed in they, they, they shrink into the rock the lighter areas pop out and then the red adds a little bit of extra color to it and then the only other thing to do with this next is to cover the top surface uh, the flat surfaces on the top of this with dirt but of course before I do that I have to fix the wall back there we're gonna repaint that blue again for the sky and then we'll do the the dirt on top of that and then after the dirt you know the normal stuff it'll be ground foam and things like that and then what you want to do with the dirt is you want to get in here when you start dropping this down you want it to fall in the areas that are flat like here all down in here you know here all these flatter areas you want that dirt you sprinkle it from the top and you let it fall naturally and you'll glue that in place and you can run brush and things like that you can you can do uh, static grass on top of those areas and it just brings out the rock all that much more see like here's this line right here that you can see and without doing the spraying of the black the black would have never got inside of there and inside of here all down those lines those aren't shadows that's actually the black paint in there and deep inside of here you know all these areas that's what the spraying did and then the darker grays got in, you know, not, I didn't spray them quite as hard into these areas here. And it darkened, it put it in stages as far as how dark everything is. So I'm going to continue finishing, continue the dry brushing, and when I'm done, I'll come back through and we'll take a final look at the whole thing and you'll, we'll see how it came out. Okay, so this is the point where I'm going to call it done. I'm not going to mess with it any, anymore, um, so the next step would be the dirt and the ground foam. But this is how it looks. This is the finished result. Let's see if I can get you... 
like that. So that's 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 it. And there's with the roundhouse and in the with the rocks in the background. I think it looks pretty good. Let me take you down to the other end and you can see that too. Okay, so there's the back end behind the roundhouse and everything's all painted. Now the brown looks a little heavy on the tops and that's fine because we're going to cover that with the dirt and the ground foam so we're not going to worry about that. We're just looking at the rock faces. And there's a view from the from the end looking down the whole thing. And that's the whole thing. Um, I think right now though what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the wall in place. So why don't we go do that and then we'll call this video done. Alright so this is our rock wall, a rock wall, our cement retaining wall. Um, I'm going to get this ready. I'm going to throw some caulk on the back and I'm going to set it and weight it in place so that we can have that done as well. And all I'm going to do to mount that is I have some clear caulk I'm going to use here. Nothing fancy. Just going to run a bead of this down the back. And I'm only using clear because, well, it's all I have at the moment. So we're going to put that up in there. Um, normally I would probably have used the 230 caulk that I used on the foam and everything else, but I'm out of it at the moment. So let's push this up into place. Just like that. And then we'll let that dry. I'm thinking we'll let that sit overnight. And then we'll pull the weights off tomorrow. And then we can start proceeding on to... I think the next thing I'm going to do is the... Uh, we're going to start building the road that's going to go over the tracks. We're going to start working on that. So that's that. It's kind of hard to see what goes on, but that's that's the idea. So I think that's going to be the end of this video for this week. Um, I hope this helps some of you or somebody at least. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. Uh, let's me know I'm going in the right track and people are liking what I do. Um, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy modeling.